Greetings to all lovers of tales, myths, and legends. Moody and impulsive ruler of the seas, his unruly character provokes storms and tempests. Many ships have foundered because of them. Poseidon is depicted as a mature, long-bearded man. His gaze is menacing, and in his strong hands, he holds a trident, a weapon and a symbol of power. With it, Poseidon governs the element of water, summoning and calming storms. But it wasn't just the sea that roiled with his anger. The earth itself trembled with Poseidon's wrath. So why was he so irritable? Let's try to understand. Poseidon was the son of Cronus and Rhea, one of those children who were swallowed by their father as soon as they were born. The oracle had predicted to Cronus that one of his offspring would overthrow him, so the negligent father swallowed them all. This unfortunate fate befell the infant Poseidon as well. Swallowed, he awaited liberation in the womb of his father. Perhaps this in some way influenced his character. Soon, Rhea decided to deceive her husband and hid one of her children, Zeus, and instead gave the tyrant a stone wrapped in swaddling clothes. It was Zeus who was destined to free his brothers and sisters, one of whom was Poseidon. Barely breaking free, Poseidon joined forces with his relatives, and together they finally managed to defeat the Titans, overthrowing them into Tartarus. It was Poseidon who crafted the copper door that imprisoned the Titans in Tartarus. When everything had settled down, the time came to divide the power. And by drawing lots, the three brothers, Zeus, Hades, and Poseidon, decided the fate of the world. Zeus received Olympus, Hades the underworld, and Poseidon became the ruler of the seas. But was he satisfied with this fate? Certainly not. He always believed he deserved more. That's why one day he initiated a rebellion. But we'll talk about that later. For now, the newly proclaimed Lord of the Seas is building a luxurious underwater palace near the city of Aegea to establish his dominion. Next to the palace, he is constructing stables where magnificent seahorses with golden manes and fishtails, known as hippocampi, will reside instead of regular horses. However, it is not fitting for the sea king to ride on horseback, so he needs a chariot befitting his stature. Let it be made of gold, thinks Poseidon, and may all storms subside as it approaches. And let's not forget about his entourage. Let it consist of creatures from the depths of the sea. And so, the palace is ready. The chariot, pulled by Hippocampi, surrounded by the retinue, awaits the new ruler to inspect his dominions, just as Poseidon desired. However, he feels lonely and wishes to find a spouse who would be fond of the depths of the sea. The choice falls on the daughter of the elder Nereus and the Oceanid Doris Amphitrite. However, the girl, aware of the character and power of the Sea King, was afraid of his advances and fled to the Atlas Mountains, where she found refuge with Atlas, the mighty tyrant who holds the celestial vault on his shoulders. But soon Poseidon learned of his beloved's hiding place, and not wanting to frighten the young Nereid again, he sent envoys after her, one of whom was a dolphin. The dolphin narrated the matter so skillfully that the fugitive could not refuse and asked him to take care of the wedding arrangements. In gratitude, Poseidon placed the image of the dolphin among the stars as the constellation Delphinus. Thus, the sea realm gained a queen, and Poseidon found a wife. She bore him three children, Triton, Rhode, and Benthesicheim. Triton, the messenger of the depths of the sea, is half-human, half-fish. Once, during the battle between the gods and the giants, he found a seashell, hollowed it out, and blew into it. The giants, upon hearing this sound, became frightened and fled the battlefield. The children of Triton and the nymphs became a separate subgroup in mythology. They are often seen in the retinue of Poseidon and Amphitrite, riding dolphins and blowing into seashells. Poseidon's daughter, Rhode, became the wife of another god, Helios. To earn her favor, the sun god named an island after his beloved, Rhodes. Another daughter, Benthesicheim, married the Ethiopian king Inalos. 
Later, Poseidon entrusted her with the upbringing of his son Eumolpus, whom his mother Kione had cast into the sea to hide her affair with Poseidon from his father. It seemed that Poseidon's dominion was vast, but his ambition was not satisfied. He desired power not only over the seas, but also over the land. And one day, he struck the Athenian Acropolis with his trident, declaring his rule over Attica. As soon as his trident touched the Athenian land, a spring gushed forth, and seawater flowed from it. It is said that this spring still exists today. However, during the reign of Cecrops, Athena announced her dominion over Attica, seemingly to spite Poseidon. She planted the first olive tree near that very spring. To say that the Lord of the Seas was furious would be an understatement. He immediately challenged Athena to a duel, and she was ready to accept. But Zeus intervened in the dispute. He demanded that the matter be resolved peacefully. The Supreme Court of the Gods was convened to settle the dispute. They even called upon Cecrops to testify. In the end, all the gods supported Poseidon, except Zeus. He decided not to interfere in the matter. The goddesses, however, cast their votes in favor of Athena. Thus, with a one-vote majority, the goddess of war won the dispute and gained Attica by presenting the best gift. Poseidon was enraged and decided to seek revenge on Athena. For this purpose, he sent enormous waves to flood the Thriasian plain, where Athena's city was located. Athena found refuge in the Athenian Acropolis, which she also named after herself. However, to appease Poseidon's anger in some way, women in Athens were deprived of the right to vote, and men were forbidden to bear their mother's names. Despite his failures, Poseidon did not give up hope of gaining power over the land. Once again, he entered into a dispute with Athena over another city. To avoid a fight, the supreme god had to intervene again, this time proposing to divide the city between the warring parties. However, such an outcome did not satisfy any of the gods. Since he couldn't win disputes against Athena, Poseidon decided to make a claim on Zeus' territory, Aegina. Once again, he was unsuccessful. Then he attempted to take Naxos from Dionysus and once again faced defeat. It seemed like it was time to calm down. But Poseidon, like a fierce sea storm, was only fueled by his failures and planned to take Corinth from Helios. However, despite all his efforts, he only managed to obtain the Isthmus, while Helios retained the local Acropolis. Enthusiastic about his small victory, Poseidon tried to take Argolis from Hera. He was ready to fight for it, but he was asked once again to appear before the court of the gods. The Lord of the Seas refused to do so, as he believed the court was biased against him. Wise Zeus decided to transfer the case to the river gods Inachus, Cephasus, and Asterion, who ruled in favor of Hera. Poseidon was furious. Pouring fuel on the fire, he added a prohibition on flooding as a means of revenge. Instead, he dried up the streams of his fellow judges, the rivers. So, during the summer, they completely dried up. Poseidon desired power not only over lands but also over women, be they goddesses or mortal women. In this, he resembles his brother Zeus. Thus, Amphitrite had as much reason for jealousy as Hera. Amphitrite was particularly outraged by Poseidon's relationship with Scylla, the daughter of Phorcys. She turned her into a monster with six dog heads and twelve legs by throwing magical herbs into the pool where she bathed. In addition to Scylla, his lovers included Eubea, whom Poseidon abducted and then transformed into an island. Thaya, the first priestess of the god Dionysus. The Austrian nymph De Petra, and others. One particularly interesting case is that of Canais, who agreed to give herself to Poseidon only if he granted her wish. Poseidon agreed, and Canais wished to become an invulnerable youth and changed her name to Cenius. He could not be wounded by iron but only by wooden branches. Another lover of Poseidon, the daughter of Aeolus, whom he seduced in the form of a bull, bore him two sons. 
For this, her father blinded her because he did not believe in her connection with Poseidon, and he left his grandsons to be torn apart by beasts. In the end, they were nourished by a cow. These children were named Biotis and Aeolus. When they grew up, Aeolus seized the islands in the Tyrrhenian Sea and named them the Aeolian Islands, establishing the city of Lipera there. Biotis, on the other hand, went to his grandfather Aeolus and was adopted by him, becoming the king of Aulis. Biotis named his country after his mother, Arnas, and its inhabitants became known as Boeotians. A similar case occurred with the daughter of Sertian, Alopa. For her connection with Poseidon, her father buried her alive, and he threw his grandson away, but the child was nursed by a mare and raised by shepherds. Changing one's appearance to possess a desired woman is not uncommon in myths, both for Zeus and Poseidon. For example, the former transformed into a snake to seduce his sister Demeter, while the latter seduced her in the form of a horse. Among other disguises, Poseidon took the form of a dolphin to seduce Melanthius, a ram to connect with Theophane, and a bird for the Gorgon Medusa, whose story, by the way, is quite tragic. Apart from female lovers, Poseidon also had male lovers. Well, at least one, Pelops. When he was still a child, he was offered as food to the gods who gathered at Tantalus' banquet. Demeter took a bite of Pelops' shoulder and the deception was exposed. The child was then resurrected, and Demeter replaced the bitten shoulder with a prosthetic made of ivory. Since then, all descendants of Pelops have a bright white spot on their right shoulder. Since then, Pelops grew up on Olympus among the gods, and Poseidon fell in love with him. He gave him a swift-winged chariot that could race not only on land but also on the sea. By the way, regarding horses and chariots, Poseidon boasted that he created the horse, although some say that at its birth, Rhea gave this animal to be devoured by Cronus. He also boasted that he invented the bridle, although the bridle was invented by Athena before him. However, no one disputes his priority in introducing horse racing. It is also undisputed that horses were his sacred animals. That's what Poseidon was like, a passionate lover of women, power-hungry, impulsive, and adventurous. Thank you all for your attention, and see you in new videos.